Can you complete Sonic Adventure without collecting a single ring? Technically no, but wait, before you click off the video, calm down and let's go through this together. So before we get started, let me quickly go over the rules for this challenge. First of all, if I pick up a ring at any point that isn't through a cutscene, it counts as a fail and I have to restart the section. I can't just take a hit to lose the ring and then keep going. More on that in a moment. The reason why I say a section is that if I'm able to reach a checkpoint without collecting any rings, I can restart from that checkpoint. The purpose of this video is to see whether it's possible to beat the game without collecting rings not if I can do it in just one run. Secondly, Tails collecting rings does count towards failure. At first I wasn't going to put this stipulation in as I have zero control over the CPU, but whenever Tails does collect a ring it does get added to your total. Third of all, this will not be a glitchless run. I discovered pretty quickly that some of the routing made these glitches a necessity. Rest assured, the vast majority of these glitches are easy to pull off yourself, and there's only a handful of them throughout the course of the run, so I'll explain how I used them when they eventually come up. Finally, the run will begin the moment I gain control of Sonic during the Chaos Zero boss fight and will conclude upon the defeat of the Egg Viper. Right from the get-go, we run headfirst into a problem. You see, during the opening cutscene before you actually face off against Chaos Zero, Sonic will home an attack from the cop car into a trail of rings, forcing you to collect them before you even gain control of the blue blur. From what I can tell, there's no way to avoid these unless you can somehow gain control of Sonic during the cutscene. He will always collect the two rings before you have a chance to move away. Thanks to this technicality, the run isn't possible, but for the sake of fairness, we won't count these on this instance. Only rings that can be collected during actual gameplay. As for the boss fight, it's rather simple really. Avoid Chaos attacks and boop them on the head three times to win the fight. As long as you stay in the centre, the other rings won't really affect you. With Tails interrupting Sonic's well-earned vacation, we rush to the first stage of the game, Emerald Course. Like most tutorial stages in the series, Emerald Course is filled to the brim with cool set pieces, straightforward designs to teach you the basics of Sonic's movement, and the sole enemy of this challenge, Rings. Our journey to the first checkpoint was a simple one, taking care to avoid rings on our path and utilising probably the most integral piece of tech not only for the run, but this game in general, the spin dash jump. Seriously, this will save us on many occasions, and even then it's just fun to play around with, allowing you to manipulate Sonic's momentum in a way that can send him flying, opening up crazy circles and skips if you know where to look. After spin dash jumping across the ocean to skip an automated loop, we dash across the bridge meeting our first real threat to this challenge. The Whale. This set piece is probably one of the most iconic in the series and I still remember it fondly. That was until I realised something terrible. They placed rings along the bridge. At first I thought maybe the dash pads were the trigger for the whale, however the whale will start to chase Sonic as soon as you turn the first 90 degree corner. What I realised almost immediately was that the set pieces in this game don't have a set speed per se. Their movement speed actually corresponds to Sonic's momentum itself. Using this knowledge to my advantage, I was able to come up with a consistent strategy to clear the bridge. By hugging the left side of the fence, I was able to avoid the dash pads allowing the whale to safely push Sonic along until the next corner. From here, all we had to do was carefully jump upon the ramp that takes us to the final bridge without touching the incoming rings. In the final section of the chase sequence, there are a trail of rings on the straightaway, but you can easily avoid these by jumping over them, reaching the next checkpoint with ease. Now none of that was going to be possible without the free camera. Now I've never used this actual mouse playing the venture before as it's really finicky for the most part. However, having the ability to see in front of you, especially during the automated sections, really helps a lot in clearing this first hurdle. All we had to do now was spin dash up the mountain and head to the lighthouse for the final section of the stage. The rest of Emerald Coast went off about a hitch, until the very last automated section on the long winding road that takes you to the shoreline where Tails is. Having spin dash jumps over the loop, I found that as long as you don't move the analog stick during the automated section, Sonic won't actually move, allowing you to charge up a spin dash and jump over to the ramp clearing the stage without collecting a single ring. With Tails saved, he invites us to his butch shop in the Mystic Ruins. Before that though, I wanted to take a detour and collect one of Sonic's upgrades, the Crystal Ring. Now the Crystal Ring is actually extremely easy to sequence break. What you're actually supposed to do is light speed dash across the trail of rings before the door closes on you, and you don't get the shoe upgrade until later on. However, if you only activate the switch that opens the door, you can spin dash jump across and get it much earlier. All in all, it isn't really that useful to us, and even became a detriment at some points in the run, but I still like having it regardless. After hopping on a train to the Mystic Ruins, we are confronted at the workshop by none other than Dr. Eggman. We face off in our first encounter with the good doctor piloting the Egg Hornet. Despite the intimidating name, it's actually really easy even with the no ring stipulation. Even a slightly charged spin dash will outspeed the oncoming projectiles. And as long as you home an attack spam, this battle will end on the first cycle. After this, we grab the Windstone, allowing us entry into the second stage of the run, Windy Valley. When you view this stage in isolation, it really isn't all that difficult, even when you are avoiding the rings. However, when you realise Tails accompanies you in the stage, and the fact that the rings he collects are also added to your overall total, you begin to see just how infuriating this level actually becomes. 
The journey up to the first checkpoint, even with Tails, shouldn't prove any trouble. Just avoid the rings and be careful not to hold inside the container with the electric shield and you'll be fine. It's only when you approach the next part of the stage, a ramp leading up to the wind path where I was regretting taking part in this challenge in the first place. No matter what I tried, Tails still found a way to collect the rings on the way down. Hitting him off the edge of the stage didn't work, trying to manipulate his movement with my own also didn't work. If you keep trying, eventually you'll brute force your way through to the tornado without Tails messing you over. But this did take 4 or 5 resets to actually get right. Just be careful not to hit him into anything. The tornado section was a little tricky to get right. Straight away you're confronted with a spring you need to take up to the next section. The only issue is that there's a ring trail. You can avoid it if you hold down on the analogue after hitting the spring to weave a way through them, but it's pretty awkward to pull off. The jump panels will eventually lead you to an almost identical scenario, only this time with a trampoline. Eventually I discovered that it doesn't actually matter what part of the trampoline you land on, it will still propel Sonic upward all the same. My best advice is that you should aim for the wooden frame, as Sonic will still bounce upward, and you'll have just enough wiggle room to reach the bridge without touching any rings. From here though, just be careful not to touch anything as you spin dash jump your way to the final spring. And just like that, you've reached the final section pretty smoothly. Since the final section is the same section that Tails goes through during his story, the openness can actually be used to our advantage. Now from a first glance it appears that Sonic's only way forward is through the many winding bridges, except you'd be wrong. Literally throughout this section there are like these mini chunks of rock floating in the air that actually have collision, making it possible to spin dash jump from rock to rock pretty easily. Free cam was also must here as it was actually possible to line up your jumps, and since Tails tries to follow Sonic's movement, he avoids the many rings located on the intended pathway. Unfortunately there aren't enough of these rocks to take us to the end of the stage, so after the rocket we're forced back onto the intended pathway. Thankfully it is easy enough to avoid the rings as long as you hug the wall, and the automated loot doesn't contain any rings either, granting us an easy way forward. Riding the gust of air up to the spring boss, carefully avoiding any rings along the way, we make it to the final section of Windy Valley, a massive downward slope that Sonic has to run down before we can reach the blue chaos emerald on a floating chunk of terrain. Turns out you can just jump from the starting platform and land just before the wind ramp, and since you're at dash pads here our lack of momentum isn't taken into account, allowing us to beat the stage without collecting any rings. With that, that's two stages down and many more to go. Taking the train back to Station Square, we're lured into the sewer of all places to obtain Sonic's upgraded shoes, allowing him to use the light speed dash which will never be used in this run. Seemingly we're trapped here unless we use the trailer rings to get out, although thanks to a very slight incline that is conveniently placed underneath the exit of the sewer, we can just spin dash jump out of here unscathed. The switch on top of the casino is basically solved in the same way. They want us to use the light speed dash to reach the switch. Instead of an incline, this time around we actually have a full staircase to work with, making it a trivial task of reaching it with a well-timed spin dash jump. You thought I was kidding when I said this was the most important tech in all of Sonic Adventure, didn't you? Despite the bad reputation this level has garnered over the years, it's actually one of my favourites due to all the references sprinkled throughout. Don't get me wrong, I suck at pinball, but I can appreciate this stage for introducing me to the Night series, and all the good memories that are intertwined with it. I remember my mind being blown when I discovered the sewer area as a kid, since I sucked at the pinball game and always had less than 50 rings when entering it. In saying all of that, the objective of this stage is definitely the antithesis of the run. The Chaos Emerald is locked in a safe, protected by an invisible wall, so we can't just spin dash jump to reach it. The more rings we collect and give to the casino, the higher the gold will build until it reaches the emerald at a total of 400 rings. However, the gold is actually loaded into the level upon arrival, and it's placed underneath the stage, until you allow the grabby claw to shake the rings out of you. So by clipping through a very specific wall with a spin dash jump, we can land underneath the geometry onto the pile of gold underneath the safe. Unless you practice this, it can be a bit tricky to pull off, but generally you want to try to aim Sonic into the middle of the gold pile, as even if you land on the incline of gold that's closest to you, you will actually end up touching the death plane by accident. And even if you get it right, the camera might glitch out on you and you won't be able to see what you're doing. Eventually though, once you get it right and the camera lines up so you can see, you want to aim a spin dash jump up the small incline of gold to the right. Doing this allows you to jump beyond the invisible wall so you can reach the platform where the grey emerald is. Just make sure you don't home and attack prematurely and you can clear the stage ringless pretty easily. With three emeralds to our name, our friends are once again blindsided by Eggman, snatching the emerald we just collected. With nothing left to do in Station Square, we take the ice stone on the train, entering the newly found cave of the Mystic Ruins to enter Ice Cap Zone. Ironically enough, the hardest part of Ice Cap proved to be the very beginning of the stage. We spawn in an igloo with only a small narrow exit littered with a trailer rings. This normally wouldn't be an issue, but once again Tails is here to ruin our day. Eventually, like before, I brute forced my way through. The way I did so was clearing the enemy out of the way beforehand and then hitting Tails myself. Whilst Tails was still in his staggered animation, if you're fast enough, you can spin dash jump out of the igloo, and rather than follow you, he'll respawn outside with Sonic, since he was too far away at that point. From here, all you gotta do is just use the higher incline further up the hill to spin dash jump to the next section of the stage. 
Despite how tempting it is, do not hit the checkpoint here. I repeat, do not hit the checkpoint here. The reason being is that if you mess up at any point and have to restart, Tails will always respawn on top of a ring. This checkpoint is rather redundant anyway since if you restart you'll spawn at the entrance of this section regardless. By carefully manoeuvring yourself on top of the roof of the cave, you can use this incline as a ramp to spin that jump to the bridge above you. It may take you a few tries, but you should get it almost immediately. Just be careful, as Sonic will land literally inches away from a path of rings. By using free cam to get a better look, I was able to spin that jump over then to hit the next checkpoint. This narrow bridge can be an absolute magnet for tails, so I'd recommend losing him before you try to spin dash jump across. The loop itself doesn't contain any rings, so you can allow the momentum to take you through, using the jump pads to reach the final section of the stage. The final section of Ice Cap is famous for its snowboarding section, and whilst I did try to go through this route legitimately, unfortunately I was just simply unable to get through it without collecting a ring. I am convinced you can do this ringless if you put enough time into it, however there is a glitch we can use to bypass the snowboard completely. On the left side of this cavern, just before the plank wood that leads to the small cutscene, there's a spot that Sonic can click through just by walking into it. The best way that I can explain it, is that the location is in between two darker spots of the wall texture, a space or so away from the wood. I found that free cam made this more consistent, but I'm sure Sonic will also click through with auto camera as well. Once you're through and free falling, you just have to focus on landing on solid geometry. While some parts are textured, they don't have any collision, meaning you'll just fall right through it. I found it easier to fall in the middle of the snowboarding section just before those fleet spawn Bombard you with the explosives in the set piece. Because we're in this section with Sonic himself rather than the snowboard gameplay, it's way easier to just take your time and gradually make your way to the Green Emerald. And with that, we now have four stages under our belt. All that's left for us to do here is to meet up with Knuckles by the waterfall. Now one of the weaker aspects of Sonic Avenger has to be the rival fights. Like don't get me wrong, even in the future games they aren't all that great either, but they're a complete pushover here. You shouldn't have any trouble hitting Knuckles three times, although if you want to save the time avoiding the rings, if you place Sonic just behind them, Knuckles will collect him himself as he chases you, and unlike Tails they aren't added to your toll. From what I can tell this only happens with characters that are actually playable in the game. Gamma also has this property, whilst Eggman and Tails will simply just phase through the rings completely. After slapping some sense into the Knucklehead, we once again face Chaos now fueled by the power of 4 Chaos Emeralds. Depending on your luck with the RNG cycles, this fight can be over in no time at all, or you'll be standing around for minutes on end waiting for an opening. Luckily we did get a rather generous cycle, even in saying that though, this fight wasn't as easy as I hoped. The amount of rings placed upon the lily pads are absolutely ludicrous. Whilst there are some pads that don't have any rings at all, the ratio is so disproportionate that I opted to just stand in the water instead, limiting Sonic's movement in the process. The camera here wasn't any help either. On a positive note, Chaos has some of the most telegraphed audio cues in the game. The only other boss that I can think of that has this many would be the Egg Viper. In the end, as long as you hug the wall of the arena and spam the spin dash jump, you just have to wait until Chaos reveals himself. This however can also pose problems. For one, when Chaos does appear since you can't manipulate the camera, you have to try and locate him until you find a better viewing angle, which means you might take too long and have to wait god knows how long for another chance. And as I already established, bosses that aren't actually playable in the main story can't collect rings, they simply phase right through them. Because of this, Chaos can rise the surface inside of a ring and you wouldn't know it until you home and attack him collecting it by accident. All in all, if you take your time and play it safe, you'll bypass this challenge without too much difficulty, but it can be annoying with just how long Chaos 4 can drag out this fight for. The defeat of Chaos forces Eggman to retreat in his new shiny fleet, the Egg Carrier. Joining Tails at the bookshop, we hop into the tornado to give chase. Sky Chase. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Sky Chase is just a filler level as there's no rings present at all, which means it's my favourite level in the game by default. Eventually, Eggman nukes Tails out of the sky, which is bloody amazing as he can't ruin any more of this run for the next few stages. Thank you, Eggman. Conveniently ending up in two completely different locations despite falling from the same plane, Sonic returns to Station Square in search of his arch nemesis, the ring collecting fox. Instead, we're interrupted by his number one fan and end up at an amusement park for couples, Twinkle Park. Now I knew pretty much going in that Twinkle Park was going to suck balls. On a normal playthrough, this level can be a real treat to run through, especially the beginning with the bumper cars. In a no ring playthrough on the other hand, I hate this level, I hate this level, guess what, I hate this level. Initially, I tried a similar tactic to Ice Cap, thinking that I could somehow click through the door without one of the vehicles. And sure enough, it worked. No seriously, for some reason this door has no collision at all, you can literally walk right through it and you'll be fine. Unfortunately, whilst I could get through the door, no matter what I tried, the camera wouldn't respond. Even by switching from free cam back to auto, the view you are given is far from where you actually are, making it impossible to traverse the track in this way. With a broken heart, I caved and got into one of the cars, and whilst it is possible to reach the end of the circuit ringless, this whole ordeal took me over 3 hours of attempts. 
from rings spawning in my way at the last moment to the wankers in the other bumper cars ramming Sonic and killing him on impact, this was a chore to get through. Ultimately, we persisted and this is how I eventually did it. The trick to this entire section is speed, even if you don't have any rings, as long as you're going faster than the other racers and hit them from the front, you won't die. Although for the most part, I just found it way easier to slip by them completely. Releasing the accelerate whilst turning actually gives you a wider radius. It turns out actually mashing the A button instead gives you the best of both worlds. You aren't going too fast but your turning is also a lot sharper at a higher speed. As long as you weave through the rings you'll be just fine. Towards the end, two enemies in grey cars will run towards you and this ended up killing me on several attempts. Eventually, I found a way to weave through the rings and as long as you stay either to the wide left or right, you can avoid the third enemy crashed into the wall. The next set piece has no rings along it, so you just have to make sure you careen yourself into the wall after this to slow yourself down. Alright, and for some reason, after so many restarts, ring capsules that loaded onto the track previously just not showing up for some reason. I have absolutely no idea why this is the case or how it happened. It's just something that I noticed the more time I spent raging on this segment. The final problem spot of this section is right at the end of the circuit. Normally Sonic needs to jump down a hole that leads to the roller coaster. This hole has two rings stemming out of it, meaning we have to somehow enter without touching them. This is actually possible, but it took me several tries to get it right and it seemingly works when it wants to. To give you an idea, you need to cancel Sonic's jump animation with B, and if you're careful enough with your placement, Sonic will enter the next section completely dodging the rings. It's extremely finicky to pull off, though I did eventually manage it. Once I switched to the keyboard to control Sonic rather than a standard controller, once we get through, the rest of this stage is thankfully rather straightforward. As soon as you gain control after the roller coaster, you want to hold up to avoid the hole that will take you to the next section as it contains rings. Instead, backtrack along the tracks of the course and jump into what seems to be a bottom's pit. If you do this right, you'll land on a rogue floating platform that's there, allowing you to spin dash jump safely to the final section. After a few more spin dash jumps, being careful to avoid the rings and spikes along the way, you'll reach the castle with a red roof. You're able to spin that jump up the route to reach the animal capsule on the top. It can be awkward, but you should be able to pull this off after a few tries. Twinkle Park is now cleared and we can advance to hopefully easier stages. After Amy somehow outruns Sonic with her minuscule top speed, we obtain the card key allowing us to enter the locked building and the elevator that takes us to Speed Highway. In the context of this run, especially compared to what we just had to go through, Speed Highway really isn't that bad. To be fair, the open-ended nature of the stage does help a ton, as it gives us plenty of opportunities to spin that jump over large portions of the first section. Using the skyscrapers at the start of the stage to our advantage, we are able to spin that jump over to a lower platform, containing the rocket to an automated corkscrew. We don't actually want to run along it due to the rings, although we can use it as a launch pad to spin that jump forward to the final part of the first section. Carefully avoiding the rings along the highway, we defeat the enemies using the bomb container, and launch ourselves with the rocket to reach Speed Highway's most popular set piece. Similarly to the snowboarding section in Ice Cap, the building set piece is pretty difficult as Sonic is constantly moving forward. Yes, while she can slow him down by ramming into things, there's no way to just straight up stop. After a few tries, I was eventually able to memorise the layout of the rings and that helps a lot, as they don't tend to spawn in until you're really close. You can avoid the ring containers and the electric shield from a further distance though. Once you get this pattern down though, just make sure you hold left as you break through the glass, so Sonic is able to avoid the airborne rings. Finally, we've made it to the at dawn section of the stage which is by far the easiest part of Speed Highway. Making your way to the rooftop, you want to reach the life container and spin dash jump from there into a gap of the same building. This alleyway will take you through the building face and the clock tower, giving you a clear jump to the end, avoiding the water fountain and many springs in the process. Next, we chase Zero and Amy to the Mystic Ruins, eventually finding the ancient light upgrade that's needed to enter the Red Mountain. Red Mountain is the embodiment of open level design, broadened by various mountainscapes that you must traverse through using the various zip lines and rockets at our disposal. Except no, the zip lines are actually off limits as they will force you into the path of rings, so we're pretty much stuck right? I mean with Knuckles we could always glide through the canyon to safety and this is what I thought myself. Until I spin that jumps and realised that the various pillars of rock actually have collision surprisingly enough. Thanks to this stroke of pure luck, we were successfully able to clear the first obstacle to the checkpoint by following the zip line route from above with relative ease. Free camp proved itself to be a big help here as always. The rest of this section can be played through like normal as long as you're careful. That is until the final zip line that takes Sonic to the inside of the mountain itself. Like before, we followed the zip line with a spin dash jump which ended up taking us back to the switch that activates the rocket. Whilst I initially thought this was a dead end, it turns out that the zip line actually goes through this pathway, and the entrance to the next section was literally around the corner from my current position, reachable with another spin dash jump. One aspect of this run that I grew to appreciate at this point was the sheer versatility of theory crafting and just how different my approach had to be to reasonably tackle this run. My favourite aspect of adventure was always the ability to forge my own route off the intended path using my knowledge and experience with the game, something that this challenge elevated to a completely new level. 
The inside cavern of Red Mountain wasn't too difficult either, like the name of the game at this point, as long as you take your time and avoid the springs, you'll eventually find your way through unscathed. There's also a green shield in this section that you can grab, which will make your life a lot easier. I ended up losing it myself because I suck, but in the end, I still did this on my first try. Upon reaching a natural dead end this time around, we are saved by the two-tailed fox piloting the newly revamped Tornado 2, which means he'll be joining us for the remainder of the run. Yay! As before, Sky Chase Act 2 is a filler level and does my favourite level of the run. But I absolutely hate having to replay this level twice in both Sonic and Tails' story, that part where the tornado transform is still so bloody cool. After crash landing on the ship, we are greeted by Eggman who I have no doubt has been waiting all of this time to force us into an unskippable cutscene of the Egg Carrier changing formation. Because of this arbitrary reason, we must venture through the Sky Deck to confront Egghead on the bridge. I will let it be known now, I bloody hate Sky Deck. I need to know who was the person who thought a level consisting of mostly narrow bridges along a bottomless pit was a good idea. In saying that, the first section of the stage is centred around spin dash jumping. Who would have guessed? Since the cannons will destroy the bridge, you do have to be kind of quick. Although, for some strange reason, the section of the bridges with like the hurl you have to jump over are immune to this. So even if they destroy the bridge ahead of you, it doesn't really matter if you're proficient enough in taking full advantage of the spin dash. I thought I was at this point, but apparently not. This took me far too many tries to cross just the first bridge. Eventually, I did get the hang of it though, and we continue on. Just ahead of the next checkpoint, we have two pathways that we can choose from. A dash pad along a trail of rings, or a home in the attack chain. I'll give you time to guess which route we're taking here. At first, the next section did look pretty intimidating. There were a bunch of enemies along with springs littered with a bunch of rings, so I wasn't sure on how to really approach it. However, it turns out if you take to the right path where the spinners are located, you can bypass this section completely avoiding all of the rings. I never knew this pathway actually existed, which is a bit embarrassing since you know it's right there in front of you. But in all honesty, I've just never really took it into account when I play Sky at normal. After hitting the next checkpoint and avoiding the giant spike ball circling the ladder, we finally reach the last portion of this section. First of all, we hover and attack across the collapsing ladder, avoiding all of the enemies on the other side. I'm not gonna lie, I did think this section was going to be far more challenging than it actually ended up being. You see, you have to run through the bridges to reach a missile that would destroy the cannon shooting at you. Originally, I thought that they would place rings along the actual bridge, but no, they're placed in the air. As long as you stay on the ground at all times, you'll bypass this section without any problems. With the cannon now destroyed, we can finally move on to the second section of the stage. In comparison, this portion of Sky Deck is far more open than the previous. To compensate, cannons, spinners, both variations and many other traps have crammed along the route. There's also this like really cool altitude gimmick that periodically restricts your movement, but at the same time it allows Sonic to jump even higher which works to our benefit. Eventually we reach a spring that will take us to a ladder covered with rings. You also have to be quick here as the mini turrets are right next to you so you can't really dawdle around for too long. In the end we used a slight incline to spin that jump up to the next section, running away from the many fleets along the runway and destroying the final cannon that leads us to the final section of Sky Deck. Thanks to that knucklehead messing around with the controls, we now have to contend with the messed up gravity of the ship. Thankfully this final section isn't too difficult or long, just make sure you hug the walls and avoid the dash pads. Spin dash jumping also came in clutch here and was necessary to skip the final section of the stage entirely. With a well timed spin dash jump we were able to land on the roof of a tunnel, forcing the gravity to pull us backwards into the path of a switch that allows us to reach the animal capsule, completing Sky Deck without collecting a single ring. After we finally reach the bridge of the egg carrier, our heroes literally just stand around, allowing Eggman to terrorise Amy and the bird, earning his sixth Chaos Emerald. Instead of just stopping him there, Sonic allows him to escape, forcing us to combat his most loyal servant, Gamma. Just like Knuckles, he goes down in only three hits. The only difference is that Gamma can float in the air for longer and shoot projectiles at you, but that only makes him even easier to hit with a well-timed jump. I honestly wish I had more to say, but the rival fights are pathetically simple. Before we can take on Chaos and finally put an end to this madness, Dr. Eggman once again changes the shape of the egg carrier, meaning we have to activate the switch in the captain's room before we can proceed onward. It's here where I thought the run would finally end. You see, the captain rune is on a higher level than the one Sonic is currently on, with a number of runes which really give Eggman a degree of character. I absolutely love this place. What you're actually supposed to do is hit the switch and use the trailer rings to light speed dash to the room. Obviously though, we can't do that. The room itself has like these curved foundational structures to it if that makes sense. So my first thought was to line Sonic up with it and use these as a ramp to spin dash jump into the loading zone. And whilst I got pretty close, this proved to be impossible for me to do. My next idea was to go back outside and use some of the geometry of the egg carrier to spin dash jump up to the door of the captain's room. And whilst this did work, it was locked from the outside. This took around 3 hours of just me trying to brute force my way through. Somehow though, I found a way to to pass through the collision of the roof by spin dashing against the right side corner of the white dawned roof. 
To even begin to attempt with explaining this, if you aim your spin dash in the middle of the first two bolt like textures with enough persistence, she can eventually clip right through. Now this took me a few tries to get right, on some attempts I fell through the egg carrier completely to Sonic's demise, whilst on the others I simply phased through the other side of the wall. Eventually though I figured it out, as soon as you clip through the wall you want to hold left to guide Sonic into the loading zone of the captain's room, and just like that we've activated the switch without having to collect any rings. After all of the pain, the torment, the misery, we were finally able to take on Chaos 6, and yeah, he's there I guess? It seems rather anticlimactic after all of that I know, but seriously you can kill him in 2 hits if you use the light speed attack. At least Big got his frog back? With Eggman's plans foiled for the time being at least, we ventured to the mysterious Lost World. No, not that one. This Lost World is actually good. All jokes aside, Lost World isn't really that hard, as long as you take one key motto in mind. Slow and steady will win this race. The first section before the Rock Snake consists of extremely narrow corridors with a bunch of rings. As long as you hug the wall, you should get through okay, minus the seasickness from the seizure inducing camera. The next section, however, isn't so forgiving. Sonic then has to traverse this circular cavern that's filled with protruding pillars that can damage you with the fire engulfing them. From what I can tell, there doesn't seem to be a pattern for the fire. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. As long as you inch your way through, eventually the fire ahead of you will extinguish, clearing your way. After this, you have one final narrow corridor with a glitched camera using the same wall hugging strategies before, and just like that, you've made it to the next section of the stage, Ancient Water World. Now, I have no idea why so many people hate this part. If you know what you're doing, it isn't difficult or tedious. You can literally spin dash jump over to most of the switches, rendering the snake useless to begin with. In this case, I wanted to play it safe so I could avoid the rings, and after we had to fit all three switches, we are free to continue onward. The first obstacle in this next section is the pitch black room with all the mirrors. By all means, you don't actually have to activate the mirrors at all. I did so anyway so I could see what was ahead of me. We even found a green shield here that could protect us from a hit, so that was swell. You'll eventually make it to the trail of rings which we ignore completely, with a combination of free camp and spin dash jumping. The water slide, surprisingly enough, ended up being the hardest part of this entire stage. Not only can you not slow down, the rings are placed all over the damn thing. After a few tries, I realised that the placement pattern consisted of just left and right in that sequence. As long as you stay in the centre to avoid the first set of rings at the very start of the slide, you should be able to weave your way through the rest without much issue. With that out of the way, we reach the section most of you have been waiting for, the damn boulder chase. Taking what I learned from the Emerald Coast Whale Chase, I discovered almost immediately that the boulder's speed is dependent on Sonic's current momentum. I mean, look at it, that is one bloodthirsty boulder. The real challenge here was memorising the ring layout from left to right to centre, they are everywhere. It's almost like I'm not a fan of capitalism. After a few tries though, we got into the groove and beat the non-existent will of the boulder, moving on to the last section of this godforsaken stage. There isn't really a lot to say here. One thing that the anti-gravitational stone tablets made for is a great ramp. After spamming the switch to activate the wall, we're simply able to spin dash jump to the higher pathways of the stage with no problem at all. From here, a few spin dash jumps was all it took to reach the ledge with a switch on it. Normally, you would activate the switch and use the appearing rings to light speed dash your way across. In this case, that wasn't an option. After a little bit of theory crafting, I realised that we could make use of the anti-gravity gimmick on the wall to our left, which gave us a clear shot of the hole that we needed to spin dash jump our way through to finish the stage. With the Lost World conquered, Sonic is transported to the past so we can hit on Knuckles' sister, oh no. all the while learning the true nature of the water drop we've all come to know and love. Returning to the present, we discover that Eggman still doesn't know when to quit, forcing us to head to his secret base, that is quite literally visible from the other side of the jungle. Good job there, Eggman. Final Leg was one of my favourite stages. That alone can pretty much clue you in on just how horrendously wrong this went. Exaggerations aside, the first section of this stage isn't too bad. There are a ton of lasers present which will obviously kill you, however these can be bypassed by simply spin dashing underneath them, or into the grey floaty robots to activate them. In fact, the bloody cranes ended up ruining the runs more here than the lasers ever could. Yeah, the cranes can actually damage you. How in the world did I never notice this before? Once you get past this part, the rest falls into line from here. The next section with the conveyor belts and spikes isn't difficult if you keep on the move with your spin dash jumps. Once we get dizzy from the endless tumble dryers, Sonic is through to the next section. And this is where hell truly begins. I know the song for this section is called Crank Up The Heat, but did they really have to take it that far? But Jack, you are here, you asking, what's exactly wrong with this section of the stage that it has you dis tilted? And to that I say, Takashi Izuka himself must have been channeling his inner Sonic forces back in 1998 as this portion is filled to the brim with narrow, linear corridors that are automated with rings placed all throughout it. Not only do you have to constantly fight with the automated section hellbent with pushing Sonic forward, the area is so damn narrow that you can just about jump over the rings, and even if you do manage to do so, you need to be careful, otherwise the automation will push Sonic backwards and into the rings anyway. This literally took me close to an hour of just meticulously inching my way through with a spin dash jump, praying that the game didn't decide to flip me off and propel me backwards into the path of the rings. And the worst part? 
We're still not done. Because after a brief platforming section, you gotta do it all over again. Only this time it's worse, as there are even more rings that you have to avoid. Who came up with this hellhole? To top this also one curve a section off, you need to hit a switch so the elevator pad you're standing on will rise, taking you to another platforming section. The switch itself has a bunch of four rings placed above it, just to make you rage quit. Thankfully, the particles that appear from the spin dash after getting the light speed dash can activate the switch for you, meaning you don't even have to get close to the rings, but bloody hell, after this, I never want to see another ring again. Thankfully, they do know the meaning of the word mercy, as the rest of this section isn't as brutal, and once we carefully jump down to the elevator, we approach the final section of this challenge. In stark contrast to section 2, section 3 mainly consists of wider roads with no rings placed upon it, truly a paradise. The only real notable bit to mention are the funny looking robots that are absolutely relentless. They will chase on it down and they just don't stop coming. Thankfully we can just spin dash jump over these or we'll be here all day. Hovering over the fans and admiring Eggman's craftsmanship of doll replicas, we finally reach the end of the stage where we spin dash jump beside the trailer rings to complete Sonic's final stage in this ringless run. With one loose end to tie up, Sonic catches the rocket to the top of the base to face the Egg Viper in a battle to the death. Despite this being the final boss fight of Sonic's story, it really isn't that difficult even in the context of a ringless run. However, whilst it isn't necessarily hard, the fight is certainly long, and that can pose a lot of problems if you're the nervy type. Avoiding the load that Eggman is trying to serve at all costs, as long as you play on the side of caution, using the spin dash to get out of the way, you should be fine. One thing I found rather cool though is that you can actually jump over the lasers. They spawn low enough for Sonic to simply jump over them completely. As Eggman's desperation attack ends in tatters, Sonic departs from the final leg, concluding this challenge with the knowledge that yes, it is possible to complete Sonic Adventure without collecting a single ring. Well, Sonic's story at the very least. Overall, I had a ton of fun doing this challenge for the video, and yeah, while some portions were rage inducing, I do feel like a more versatile player coming out of it. If anything, this whole ordeal has only cemented this game as my favourite game of all time, if it wasn't already. Taking the freedom and creative path forging I've always loved and forced me to push my knowledge and skill to the limit to complete this challenge. I found my opinions on some of these levels changing drastically with the knowledge I've gained from this run. Stages that I never really appreciated before I garnered a newfound respect for. Whilst levels I thought I loved a lot made me realise that maybe they weren't as great as I remembered. Looking at you final leg. So whilst this video has reached its end, we are far from finished. Sonic Adventure isn't just Sonic's story after all, so with all of that said, join me in the next couple of weeks as we do this all over again to see if it's possible to complete Tails' story without collecting a single ring. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around during my descent into madness, you are truly the MVPs of this community. And if you like this video and you want to see more challenge runs like this, consider liking, smashing the subscribe button and commenting down below your favourite part of the run. All of this will truly help the channel grow, certainly with the algorithm. And if you can hit 100 subscribers by my birthday in April, that would be absolutely incredible. At this point, I've taken up enough of your time. So for now, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.